when we think about mastering, we want to talk about dynamics in two different ways. The first way is called macro dynamics. It's kind of the big picture. What we have been talking about previously with compressors and limiters is microdynamics. And I'm going to explain to you how these two different types of dynamics work together. And we're going to start with macrodynamics. Macrodynamics is the dynamic variation of the song's different sections, or the difference in dynamics between songs that are together, like on a CD. But what do I mean by a song's sections? Well, every song has sections, verses, intros, choruses, bridges, rideouts, and we balance those using macrodynamics. Microdynamics is the dynamic variation of the internal workings of the song, right? The beats, the rhythm, the transients, the pulsations, the energy of a song. That's real different than macrodynamics. And we have a lot of powerful plugins that can help us with the microdynamics, right? Limiters and EQs and compressors and all kinds of really, really sexy plugins that can do all kinds of amazing stuff on the microdynamics. And we kind of forget about something that's important, and that's the flow of the overall song. And where we can control the flow and the emotion is in the macrodynamics. And to master macrodynamics, you have to understand the song form, right? Intros into verses, into choruses, into bridges. And then there's the final choruses and how all of these very important parts of a song work together dynamically and emotionally. So here's a few things to think about, right? Intros often have a different dynamic than the section following them. They're often loud, as an intro should be, right? The first verse usually has a different dynamic than the chorus that follows it. It's usually softer, softer than the choruses, which are usually the loudest part of a song. And then there's the bridge. What do we do with the bridge? Well, bridges often build dynamically to the chorus that follows them. It's usually the chorus. Sometimes it's a verse. But classically, it builds towards the climax of the last chorus. These are things that we can control via macro dynamics. So if you're going to master a song, you have to understand that song's emotional line, right? Where are the climaxes? What are we building to? What's it about? What can I do with the macro dynamics to reinforce that? These are questions that you really have to ask yourself. And then you have to listen to the performances, right? You have to know when people are playing loud and when they're playing soft and when to go with them and when not to. But most important, you have to ask yourself, can I enhance the dynamics and feel of this song? And you can't do that unless you really listen to the song and get it. You know what I mean? So adjusting the macro dynamics is kind of like seasoning a stew. I mean, you're there to bring out the natural flavors of this song. So let's pretend that this is our hypothetical song and it has an intro. The intro is kind of loud. Then the verse gets a little softer. It builds to the chorus. It comes down a little bit in the next verse and it builds to the next chorus. And then we have a bridge that builds and builds and builds to the climax of the song. That's a possibility. Right? This is the this is the emotional line of the song. And hopefully this is the dynamic line of the song too. And if it isn't, then it's your job as the mastering engineer to bring it out. Songs can be all kinds of different emotional shapes, right? And whatever that emotional shape is, if it works, you're there to enhance it. And that's because any macrodynamic change must enhance the natural flow, energy, and emotion of the stew, or <laughs> the song. That's what we're trying to do as mastering engineers. Now, we don't always get songs that have any dynamics built into them, right? Sometimes you can get a mix that is just really, really flat. You know, no dynamic differences between the verses and the choruses. So what do we do? It's very simple. We use track automation. And this isn't just to fix flat songs, right? We can use this to enhance songs that already have a great dynamic and emotional line. Now, 
the real art of this is knowing where to boost, where to cut, and how to transition between the sections. So we're going to take a closer look at that in the next chapter.